quick revision video on transition element complex ions. So I'm going to start things off with this statement here. So Cu2 plus aqueous is really, in square brackets, cuh 2 plus. So this is what we refer to as a complex ion, and that's what it looks like there. So I'll just label a few things. We've got coordinate bonds connecting the water molecules to the central transition metal ion and these water molecules are referred to as ligands. So some key definitions now around complex ions. So the complex ion itself consists of a central transition metal ion surrounded by ligands. So what's a ligand? A molecular ion which donates a pair of electrons to the central metal ion to form coordinate bond or date of covalent bond. Minder of coordinate bond is a shared pair of electrons between two atoms where both electrons come from the same atom. And finally, the coordination number is the total number of coordinate bonds formed between the ligands and the central metal ion. So we'll start with the different types of ligands we can get. So we can get monodentate ligands, and you'll see water's in there. So water, ammonia, and chloride ions. So they're referred to as monodentate because they can form one coordinate bond with the central transition metal ion. So you can see I'm showing the lone pair. Now you know that water has two lone pairs on the oxygen, but we only use one of them to form the coordinate bond with the central transition metal ion. So there's a lone pair on the nitrogen, and we've got, well, there's four lone pairs around the chloride ion, but one of them is used to form this coordinate bond. We then move on to bidentate ligands. So these can form two coordinate bonds. So we've got two examples, ethane dioate, and there's its formula, and that's what it looks like. So the coordinate bonds are made via the O- minus part. So you can see I'm showing the lone pair again. And next we've got ethane 1,2-diamine, or ethylene diamine, or even just EN for short. So that's what that looks like there. So we've got NH2 groups at the end of the carbon chain. We've got two carbons in the chain. So it's NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2. So again, you can see we've got two nitrogens. Each one has a lone pair on. So you can form two coordinate bonds with a central transition metal ion. And then finally, we've got multidentate, or we could actually call this one hexadentate. You'll see why in a second. So this is called ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, or EDTA, or EDTA4- for short. So that's what that looks like. Now don't panic, you wouldn't have to be able to draw that in the exam, but you might have to be able to say how many um, coordinate bonds it can form. So you can see we've got four O minuses and two Ns. So this can form six coordinate bonds, and this is why it's also referred to as a hexadentate ligand. So moving on to shape and coordination number. So here's an example of a hexa aqua ion. So that's basically just means six water ligands around a central metal ion. So this one's hexa aqua ion three. So we've got iron in its plus three oxidation state. The water molecules have no charge. So we have a three plus charge on the ion. And there's a formula there. Hexaamine, cobalt two, this one. So it's central cobalt with six ammonia ligands around. Cobalt is in the plus two oxidation state. We can tell because the charge is two plus. Ammonia ligands have no charge. And finally, we've got sort of a mixed ligand complex now. So we've got central copper, and we've got two water ligands and four ammonia ligands. So this is tetra, I mean, diaqua, copper, two. So copper's in its plus two oxidation state, hence the charge. Ligands have no charge. And there's the formula there. So in all of these complex ions, we've got octahedral shape, 90 degree bond angles and coordination number. Remember that's the number of coordinate bonds um, being made to the central transition metal ion is six. So moving on to complexes with bidentate ligands now. 
So we've got, I've got the name and the formula here, so you can be thinking about what this is actually going to look like. So we've got three ethylene diamines, and it's a nickel two in the middle. So that would look like that. And the next one, three ethane dioates, iron three in the middle, and that would look like that. I'll just quickly explain the charge on these. So ethylene diamine has no charge, so the nickel, nickel two, so plus two oxidation state, plus two charge. The iron, well you can see there there's the Roman three, so iron three, each of these ligands has a two minus charge, so we've got six minus from the three ligands, three plus from the iron, so we're left with a three minus charge. You'd be pleased to know that you can actually draw these complexes like this, so you can simplify it just by showing the attachments via those nitrogens there. And likewise, the ethane dioate complex ion can be drawn like that. Still, we've got octahedral shape, I'm sure you can see that, 90 degree bond angles, and coordination number is still six. Even though we've just got three ligands, there are still six coordinate bonds. So, so far we've just seen octahedral complexes. We'll look at a couple of non-octahedral complexes now. So, tetrachlorocopper 2 just means four chlorides around a copper 2 plus ion. So, that looks like that. And the one on the right is going to be cis dichlorodiamine platinum 2. We can say cis platinum instead, and you can see its formula. So, it looks like that. So you can see these have different shapes. The one on the left is tetrahedral. So it's got a 109.5 degree bond angle. Coordination number is four now. One on the right, the cisplatin, has a square planar shape. 90 degree bond angles. The coordination number is still four. So we're gonna move on to stereoisomerism now that we can get in complexes. So just a reminder for you that stereoisomers have the same structural formula, but the ligands have got different arrangements in space around that central metal ion. Now the type of um, stereoisomerism that we can see in complexes can be cis-trans and optical. So we'll start with cis-trans. So there's a pair of square planar isomers. One is cis, one is trans. And there's a pair of octahedral complexes, and again, one is cis, one is trans. So we need to work out which one's which. So we've actually already seen this one. This is cis platin, so it's obviously the cis isomer. So why is that? It's because the like ligands are 90 degrees apart. So if you look at the bottom one, the two water ligands, they're 90 degrees apart as well. So the right-hand version must be the trans. So the like ligands now, so if we think about those two chlorides, they're 180 degrees apart, and the bottom one, the two waters, are also 180 degrees apart. So optical now, so optical isomers are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. And there's three scenarios where you can get optical isomerism in complexes. So the first one we'll look at is when a complex has three bidentate ligands. So for example, Nickel with three ethylene diamines, two plus. So there's one of the isomers. So the mirror image of that is non-superimposable, and so they are optical. You can also get optical isomerism if you have two bidentate ligands and two monodentate ligands in the cis orientation. So here's my example, cobalt with two waters. So they're the two monodentate ligands and two ethylene diamines are the two bidentate ligands. Remember they need to be in the cis orientation. I'll show you why trans doesn't work in a second. So again, we just draw the mirror image of that and they are optical. They are non-superimposable mirror images. So you can see hopefully from this Molly model photo that these, these are trans isomers. And you can see I can completely superimpose them. I can put one on top of the other and everything's running in the same direction. And then on the right hand photo, we've got the cis isomer. So these are mirror images of each other. 
and they are not superimposable because if I try to put that on top of that, turn it round, yeah, the green the green ligands would be lined up, but the um, one the bidentate ligands will be pointing in the wrong direction. So you can see that one's going back, touching the table, whereas it will be coming this way instead. And then finally, a complex, if it has one hexadentate ligand, remember EDTA4- is a hexadentate ligand. So don't worry, you would never have to draw this in the exam. So that is one form of the isomer, and the mirror image is the other isomer, the optical isomer. So finally, we're going to look at cisplatin in medicine. So cisplatin is used as an anti-cancer drug. So there's the structure again. So how does it work? It binds to the DNA of cancer cells and it prevents cell division. And ultimately the cancer cell, because it can't divide, would start to die off. So cisplatin is obviously a vital medicine, um, but it has unwanted side effects. So trials are continuing with other platinum-based drugs to try and develop one with fewer unwanted side effects.